Hello, good morning everyone. Peace be with you all. I would like to share with you this uh, constitution of our order, the Ordo Carmelatorum Descalzatorum Seculares or the Order of the Discalz Carmelite Secular, or the OCDS. So the first is our identity, values, and commit commitment. Carmelite Secular, together with the friars and nuns, are sons and daughters of the Order of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and St. Therese of Jesus. As a result, they share the same charism with the religious. It's according to their own particular state of life. It is one family with the same spiritual possessions. The same call to holiness. That's from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Then, and the same apostolic mission. The secular members contribute to the order, the, to the order, the benefits proper to their secular state. Our membership in the order of the discalls, Carmelite goes back to the relationship established between the laity and the members of the religious orders born in the Middle Ages. Gradually, this relationship took on an official character forming part of the religious institute and taking part in its charism and spirituality. In light of the church's new theology of the laity, seculars leave this membership with a clear secular identity. The members of the secular order of the Discalced Carmelites are faithful members of the church called to live in allegiance to Jesus Christ through friendship with the one we know loved, loves us. And in the service of the church, under the protection of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, in the biblical tradition of the prophet Elijah, and inspired by the teachings of the of Santer St. Teresa of Jesus and St. John of the Cross, they seek to deepen their Christian commitment received in baptism. The Virgin Mary is present in a special way, most of all as a model of our faithfulness in, the, in listening to the, word, to the Lord and in the service to Him and to others. Mary is the one who preserved in her heart the life and actions of her son and meditated on them, providing for us an example of contemplation. At Cana, she counseled to do what the Lord commanded. Mary is an example of the apostolic service. On another occasion, she waited, persevering in prayer with the apostles for the coming of the Holy Spirit thus giving witness to the intercessor, intercessory prayer. She is the mother of the order. Sikla Carmel enjoys her special protection and cultivates a sincere Marian devotion. Elijah represents the prophetical traditions of Carmel and his inspirations to live in the presence of God, seeking Him in solitude and silence with zeal for God's glory. The secular Carmelites leave the prophetic dimension of Christian life and Carmelite spirituality by promoting God's law of charity and truth in the world. Above all, by making themselves the voice for those who cannot, on their own, express their love and this truth. The role of St. Albert is the original expression of the spirituality of Carmel. It was written for the lay people who gathered in Mount Carmel to live a life dedicated to meditation on the Word of God under the protection of Our Lady. The following principles of the rule guide Carmelite life. A. Living in allegiance to Jesus Christ being diligent in meditating on the law of the Lord, giving time to spiritual reading, participating in the church liturgy, 
both in the Eucharist and the liturgy, liturgy of the hours, being concerned for the needs and good of others in the community, arming themselves to the practice of the virtues as we live an intense life of faith, hope, and charity, seeking interior silence and solitude in our life of prayer, using prudent discretion in all we do. The origin of the Discalced Carmel is to be found in St. Therese of Jesus, Santa Teresa of Jesus. She lived with profound faith in God's mercy, which strengthened her to persevere in prayer, humility, love for her brothers and sisters, and the love for the church, leading her to the grace of spiritual matrimony. Her evangelical self-denial dispositions to the service and perseverance in the practice of the virtues are daily guide to living in the spiritual life. Her teachings on prayer and the spiritual life are essential to the formation of life of the secular order. St. John of the Cross was the companion of St. Teresa in the formation of of the Discalced Carmelite Secular, uh, Discalced Carmelite Order. He inspires the secular Carmelite to be vigilant in the practice of faith, hope, and charity. He guides the secular Carmelite through the dark night to union with God. In this union, in this union with God, the secular Carmelite finds the true freedom of the children of God taking into account the origins of Carmel and the Theresian, Theresian Charism, the fundamental elements of the vocation of the Theresian secular Carmelites can be summarized as follows. Letter A. To live in allegiance to Jesus Christ, supported by the imitation and patronage of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, whose way of life is for Carmel, a model of being conformed to Christ. Letter B. To seek mysterious union with God by way of contemplation and apostolic activity, indissoluble, indissolubly joined together for the service of the Church. To give particular importance to prayer which nourished by the by listening to the word of god and by liturgy is conducive to relating with god as a friend not just in prayer but in daily living to be committed to this life of prayer demands being nourished by faith hope and above all charity in order to live in the presence and the mystery of living God. To infuse prayer and life with apostolic zeal in climate of human and Christian community. Then E, to live evangelical self-denial from theological perspective. F, to give importance to the commitment to evangelization in the ministry of spirituality as a particular collaboration of the secular order faithful to the Theresian Carmel, Carmelite identity. Second, following Jesus in the Theresian secular Carmel. Christ is at the center of our lives and of Christian exper experience. Members of the secular order are called to live the demands of following Christ in union with Him by accepting His teachings and devoting themselves to Him. To follow Jesus is to take part of His saving mission of proclaiming good news and to establish and the establishment of God's kingdom. That's in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. There are various ways of the following of following Jesus. All Christians must follow Him, must make Him the law for their lives, and to be disposed 
to fulfill three fundamental demands. The place to place family ties beneath in the interest of the kingdom and Jesus himself. To live in detachment from wealth in order to show that the arrival of the kingdom does not depend on human means but rather on God's strength and the willingness of the human person before him than to carry the cross of accepting God's will revealed in the mission that he confided, confided to each person. Following Jesus as members of the secular order is expressed by the promise to strive for evangelical perfection in the spirit, the evangelical, evangelical counsels of chastity, poverty, and obedience, and through beatitudes. By means of this promise, the member's baptismal commitment is strengthened for the service of God's plan in the world. This promise is a pledge to pursue personal holiness, which necessarily carries with it a commitment to serving the church in faithfulness to the Teresan, Teresian Car Carmelite Carism. The promise is taken before the members of the community, representing the whole church in the presence of the delegate of the superior of the order. By the promise made to the community in the presence of the superior, superior of the orders and his delegates, the person becomes full member of the secular order. By this commitment, members strive to acquire necessary training to know the reasons, the content and the purpose of the evangelical lifestyle they are undertaking. The promise highlights and it reaches the baptismal commitment in the secular Carmelites. This includes also this includes those called to married life, both as spouses and as parents. This promise is renewed once a year at Easter time. The next is the commitment to the promise to leave the spirit of evangelical counsel of chastity. The promise of chastity reinforces the commitment to love God above all else and to love others with the love of God has for them. In this promise, the secular Carmelite seeks the freedom to love God and neighbor unselfishly, giving witness to the divine intimacy promised by the Beatitude, Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. The promise of chastity is the commitment to Christian love in its personal and social dimensions in order to create authentic, authentic community in the world. By this promise, the secular Carmelite also expresses unconscious desire to respect each other as required by God's law and one state of life as a single person or married or widowed. This promise does not prevent a change in a state of life. The next is the commitment to the promise of leaving the spirit of evangelical counsel of poverty. By the promise of poverty, the secular Carmelite expresses the desire to live in accordance with the gospel and its values. The evangelical poverty, there is a wealth of generosity, self-denial, and the interior liberty and a dependence of him whole through through rich though rich yet for our sake became poor and who emptied himself to be at the service of his brothers and sisters the promise of poverty seeks an evangelical use of the goods of this world and of the personal talents as well as the exercise of personal responsibility in the society, in family, and work, confidently placing all in, in the hands of God. It also implies a commitment to the cause of justice so that the world itself responds to God's plan in combination with this. Evangelical poverty recognizes personal limitations 
and surrenders them to God with confidence in His goodness and fidelity. Next is the commitment to the promise to live the spirit of evangelical counsel of obedience. The promise of obedience is a pledge to live open to the will of God, in whom we live, move, and have our being, imitating Christ who accepted the Father's will and was obedient unto death, death on the cross. The promise of obedience is an exercise of faith leading to the search of God's will in the events and challenges in society and our own personal life. For this reason, the secular Carmelite freely cooperates with those who have responsibility for guiding the community and the order in, the, in discerning and accepting God's ways, the community's council, the provincial, and the general. Then the commitment to the promise to live in the spirit of Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are the plan of action for life and the way to enter into the relationship with the world, neighbors and co-workers, families and friends by, by promising to live in Beatitudes in daily life. Secular Carmelites seek to give an evangelical witness as members of the church and the order, and by this witness, invite the world to follow Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Then number three, the third topic is witnesses to the experience of God. The vocation of the Teresan Carmel is a commitment to live a life of allegiance to Jesus Christ, pondering the Lord's law and day and night and keeping watch in prayer. Faithful to this principle of the rule of, of the rule, St. Teresa placed prayer as the foundation and basic exercise of her religious family. For this reason, Secular Carmelites are called to strive to make prayer penetrate their whole existence in order to walk in the presence of the living God. Through the constant exercise of faith, hope, and love in such a way that the whole of, the, that the whole of their life is a prayer, a search for the union with God, the goal will be to achieve the integration of experience of God with the experience of life, to be contemplatives in prayer and the fulfillment of their own mission. Prayer, a dialogue of friendship with God, ought to be nourished by His Word, so that this dialogue becomes that we speak to Him when we pray, we hear Him when we read the Divine Word. God's Word will 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 nourish the contemplative experience of Carmelite seculars and their mission in the world. Besides personal contemplation, listening to the Word ought to encourage a contemplation that leads for sharing the experience of God in the secular order community. By this means, the community together seeks to discern God's ways maintain a permanent energy of conversion, and live with renewed hope. The Carmelite secular will be able to see through events and discover God in everything. Occupying a privileged place in nourishing the prayer of life of the Carmelite secular, seculars will be the study and the spiritual reading of scriptures and the writings of our saints, particularly those who are Doctors of the Church like St. Teresa, St. John of the Cross, St. Teresa of the Child Jesus. The Church documents are also, are also food and inspiration for the commit, commitment to follow Jesus. The Carmela Secular will make sure to have a special time set apart for prayer. As times of great awareness of the Lord's presence, 
and the interior space for the personal and intimate meeting with Him. This will lead to prayer as an attitude of life that will always and everywhere recognize God. Seek His will, His will in every event. Seek Christ in all people, whether they be a relative or a stranger, and make a correct judgment about the true meaning and the value of temporal things, both in themselves and in their relation to humankind's final goal. Thus, they will achieve a union of contemplation and action in history, integrating faith and life, prayer and action, contemplation and Christian commitment. Carmelite Secular will commit themselves daily to spending a time in practice of mental prayer. This is a time to be with God and to strengthen their relationship with Him so that they can be true witnesses to His presence in the world. The way of Christian prayer demands a life of evangelical self-denial in fulfilling one's own vocation and mission, since prayer and comfortable living are incompatible. Carmelite seculars accept from the viewpoint of faith, hope, and love, the work and suffering of its day, family worries, the uncertainty and the limitations of human life, sickness, lack of understanding, and all that makes up the fabric of our earthly existence. They will strive to make all this material for their dialogue with God in order to grow in an attitude of, of praise and gratitude to the Lord, in order to live truly, simply, freely, humbly, and completely confident in the Lord. The secular Carmelite observes the practices of the evangelical self-denial recommended by the Church of particular importance are those practice of mental prayer. This is the time to be with God to strengthen the relationship with Him so that they can be true witness to the presence in the world. The way of the Christian prayer demands a life of evangelical self-denial. These periods in the liturgical calendar have a potential Penitential character. The personal prayer life of the Carmelite secular, understood as a friendship with God, is also nourished and expressed in the liturgy and in an inexhaustible form for the spiritual life. Liturgical prayer enriches personal prayer, and this in its turn gives the lively expression of the liturgical participation. In the secular order, a special place is given in the liturgy, understood as God's word, celebrated in the active hope after having received, receive it by faith and the commitment to live in it, to live it in effective love. The sacraments, especially the Eucharist and reconciliations, need to be as signs and instrument, the freeing action of God and as an encounter with the Paschal Christ present in the ecclesial community. They are grace-giving structures in the position in opposition to the structures far foreseen in society. Carmela Secular strives to discover the liturgical prayer in the presence of Christ and the Holy Spirit living and demand, demanding something of us in everyday life. In the liturgical year, they will experience the mystery of redemption which inspires collaboration in bringing about God's plan. The liturgy of the hours, for its part, brings the secular Carmelite into communion with the prayer of Jesus and the church. The value of sacramental and liturgical life in the secular order leads its members to take part of the celebration of the Eucharist. In as far as uh, possible, they will try to receive morning, to recite morning prayer, evening prayer of the holy hours in union with the church spread throughout the world. When it is possible, they will also recite 
night prayer, their participation in the sacrament of reconciliation and other sacraments of the church will assist the process of their conversion. Fourth, serving God's plan. The lay faithful precisely because they are members of the church have the vocation and mission of proclaiming the gospel. They are prepared for this work by the sacraments of Christian initiation and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The spirituality of Carmel will, will awaken the secular Carmelites a desire for greater apostolic commitment in becoming aware of all that their call to Carmel implies. Aware of the need the world has of witnesses to God's presence, they will respond to the invitation of the church directs to all associations of the faithful followers of Christ, committing them to human society by means of an active participation in the apostolic goal of the church mission within the framework of their own charism as a fruit of this participation in evangelization, the Carmelite seculars will share a renewed state for, pray, for prayer, contemplation, and the liturgical and the sacramental life. The vocation to the secular, to the secular order is truly ecclesial. Prayer and apostolate, when they are true, are inseparable. The observation of St. Teresa that the purpose of prayer is the birth of good works reminds the secular order that graces receive ought to have an effect on those who receive them individually or as a community and above all as members of the church. Apostolic activity is the fruit of prayer where possible in collaboration with the religious superiors and with the necessary permission of those in charge, the communities of the secular order participate in the apostolate of the order. The Carmelite secular will is called to live and witness the charism of the Teresan, Teresian Carmel in the local church, that portion of the people of God in which the church of Christ is truly present and acts. All will try to be a living witnesses of God's presence and accept the responsibility for the need the church has of concrete help within the pastoral concerns in its evangelizing mission under the direction of the bishop. For this reason, each one will have an apostolate either collaborating with others in the community or individually. To their apostolic commitment, they will bring the wealth of their spirituality in the various forms it takes in evangelization, missions, parishes, houses of prayer, spirituality institutes, prayer groups, the ministry of spirituality. With their particular contribution as Carmelite, secular Carmelites, they can offer the Theresian Carmel fresh inspiration for a renewed spiritual and apostolic dynamism with creative fidelity to their mission in the church. The different apostolic activities of the secular order will be specified and evaluated in the particular statutes for the various geographical areas. The fifth topic is with Mary, the mother of Jesus. In the interior dynamism of the following of following Jesus, Carmel contemplates Mary as mother and sister, as the perfect model of the disciples of the Lord, and as such a model of life of the members of the order. The Virgin of, of the Magnificat proclaims the break with the old order and announces the beginning of the new order in which God cast the mighty down from their thrones and exalts the poor. Mary places herself on the side of the poor and proclaims how God acts in history. For secular Carmelites, Mary is a model of the total commitment 
to God's kingdom. She teaches us to listen to God's word in scripture and in life and to believe in it in every circumstance in order to live its demands. All this she did without understanding many things. Pondering all in her heart until light the light dawn through contemplative prayer. Mary is also an ideal inspiration for the sacral Carmelite. She lived close to the people and their needs, being concerned about them. She is the most perfect image of freedom and of the liberation of humanity and of the universe. She helps us understand the meaning of mission. She, mother and sister, who goes before us in the pilgrimage of faith in following the Lord Jesus, keeps us company so that we may imitate her life hidden in Christ and committed to the service of others. While giving the life that there is in Carmelite spirituality, Mary's presence also shapes its apostolate. As a result, the secular Carmelite is committed to knowing Mary better daily through the gospel to communicate to others an authentic Marian devotion leading to imitating her virtues. Guided by the outlook of faith, members of the secular order will celebrate and promote the liturgical devotion to the Mother of God in the light of the mystery of Christ and the Church. They will practice in faith and love the devotional exercise in her honor. The fourth is the formation in the school of Carmel. The central object of the process of the formation of the secular order is to prepare the person to leave the charism and spirituality of Carmel in its following of Christ and in the service of its mission. With sincere in the teachings with sincere interest in the teachings of the Church and the spirituality of our Carmelite saints, Carmelite secular seeks to be men and women who are mature in practice of faith, hope, and love, and in the devotion to the Blessed Virgin. They commit themselves to deepening their Christian, ecclesial, and Carmelite life. Christian formation is the solid basis of the Carmelite and spiritual formation. Through the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the Church documents, the secular Carmelite receive the necessary theological foundation. Both initial and ongoing formation, the teachings of, the, of Teresa and John of the Cross, help to develop in the Carmelite secular a human, Christian, and spiritual maturity for service to the Church. Human formation develop, develops the, av the ability for the interpersonal dialogue, mutual respect, and tolerance, the possibility of being corrected and correcting with serenity, and the capacity to persevere commitments. Carmelite identity is confirmed by the formation in the scriptures, the Lectio Divina, in the in the importance of the liturgy of the church, especially the Eucharist and the liturgy of the hours and in the spirituality of Carmel, its history and the works of the order's saints and the formation in prayer and meditation. Formation for the apostolate is based on the theology of the church concerning the responsibility of the laity and on the understanding of the role of the seculars in the apostolate of the order. This helped to know the place of the secular order in the church and in Carmel and give a practical way to share the graces received through the vocation of to Carmel. The gradual introduction to the life of the secular order is structured in the following manner. A. A sufficient period of contact with the community for no less than that six months. The purpose of this stage is that the applicant 
may become more familiar with the community, the style, and li the style of life and the service of the church proper to the secular order of the Teresa and Carmel. This period also gave the community the opportunity to make an adequate discernment. The provincial statutes will specify this period. After the initial period of contact, the council of the community may admit the applicant to a more serious period of formation that usually lasts for two years leading to the first promises. At the beginning of this period of formation, the scapular is given to the, to the applicant. This is an outward symbol of the membership of the order and the sign that Mary is both mother and model of this on this journey. At the end of this stage, with the approval of the council of the community, the applicant may be invited to make the first promise to follow the evangelical councils and to live in the spirit of the Beatitudes for the period of three years. In the last three years, members of the initial formation, there is a deeper study of prayer, the scriptures, the documents of the church, the saints of the order, and the formation of the apostolate of the order. And at the end of these three years, the council, the applicant may be invited by the council to make the definitive promise to leave the evangelical councils and the spirit of these Beatitudes for life. Seven. The Organization and the Government Secular Order of the Our Lady of Mount Carmel and the Saint Teresa of Jesus is an association of the faithful, an integral part of the Discalced Carmelite Order. It is essentially lay in character with the welcome participation of the diocesan clergy. The friars and nuns of the Teresian Carmel consider the lay community of the secular order an enrichment to their consecrated life. Through a mutual interactions, the friars and nuns wish to learn from the secular Carmelites to recognize the signs of the times together with them. For this reason, it will be arranged that the representatives of the secular order are present when the apostolic service of the order is planned in the ge geographical area at the study a study is made on the situation of the church or in society. All of Christ's faithful have the right to make vows. With the consent of the council of the community and the permission of the provincial, a member of the secular order may make vows of obedience and chastity in the presence of the community. This Vows are strictly personal and do not create a separate category of membership. They suppose a greater commitment of fidelity to evangelical life, but do not transform those who make them into juridically recognized consecrated person as in institutes of consecrated life. Those who make vows in the secular order continue to be lay persons in all juridica, juridical effects. The secular order is basically, basically structured in the local community as the visible sign of the church. At the provincial level and in the local communities, the secular order enjoys juridical personality. The secular order is juridically dependent on the discalced Carmelite friars. The superior general establishes the local communities and makes pastoral visitation. He may dispense the particular cases from the constitution and the local statutes and can grant juridical exemptions. He has the authority to resolve cases which are not foreseen by this legislation which cannot be resolved by the local authorities. A general delegate assists the superior general. His responsibility is to further relations between the religious and the seculars and to maintain contact with the provincial delegates and the assistants to each community
to ensure the purpose and well-being of the secular order. The general definitory of the order approves the regional and the provincial statutes of the secular order. The provincial superior usually aided by the provincial delegate. This is a superior of the secular order within his territory. He is responsible for the well-being of the secular order within the territory of his jurisdiction. He is to make visitations of the communities in his jurisdiction and after consultation with the council, appoint a spiritual assistant for the communities. In case of disputes, appeal will be made in the first instance to the provincial. The spiritual assistant to each community is usually a friar of the order. His duty is to give spiritual aid to the community so that its members may be guided in their vocation and may correspond with it as perfectly as possible. He also he will also endeavor to promote solidarity between the secular community and the friars and nuns of the order. At the invitation of the council, he may attend meetings of the council without the right to vote. At the different stages of formation of the candidates, he will be available to to interview them. The council may consult him about the suitability of the candidate to assume the, the responsibility of the vocations to the secular order. He will support the formation of the community by his availability of the director of the formation. However, he may not be the director of formation. The spiritual assistant must be well versed in Carmelite spirituality and well informed in the church teachings concerning the role of the lay people in the church. Only the general of the order for this, for those territories where there are no friars or provincial within his territory may appoint as assistant one who is not a friar of the order, always within the consent of the candidate's own superior. The general delegate, the provincial delegate will assist in this appointment by interviewing the candidate. They will look for same qualities as mentioned in number 44 of these norms. The council composed of the president, the three councillors, and the director of formation constitutes the immediate authority of the community. The primary responsibility of the council is the formation and Christians and Carmelite Martin maturing of the membership of the community. The council has the authority A. Admit the candidates for forma to formation, the promises and the vows, to reduce for adequate reasons the period of formation before temporary promise promises with the permission of, of the provincial, to convene the community for the triennial elections, to replace for the serious reason a member of the council itself and dismiss a member of the community should this be necessary after consulting the provincial and to receive the member transferring from one and from another community if a member should arise that is outside the competence of the council it is the obligation of the president to bring it to the attention of the provincial the council meets frequently and always, and always, when necessary in reference to taking care of the formation programs and the growth of their own community. The general superior and the council of the community are the legitimate superiors of the, of the secular order. For the establishment of the new community, it is necessary to to present to the General Secretary of the Secular Order the following documents. A list of the current members, at least 10 members, are required to form a community, two of whom must have made definitive promises. A letter, that, a letter from the provincial delegate requesting the establishment of the community, then the permission of the ordinary of the diocese in writing, and the title of the community, then the place of the community meeting. 
every three years, its local community of the secular order elects its president and the three councillors. These four officers, after consulting the assistant, elect the director of formation from among those who have made a definitive promise. The council then names a secretary and a treasurer. The procedure for the elections is to be determined by the provincial statutes respecting the, com the complete liberty of the elect electors, the preference of the majority of the members. For the president to be re-elected at the third term as president, the permission of the provincial superior is required. The president elected among, among those who have made final promises has a duty to convoke and preside over the meetings of the community. He should show fraternal services to all the members of the community, foster a spirit of Christian and Carmelite affability, being careful to avoid any dis demonstration of preference of some members over others, coordinate contacts with those members of the community who, because of age, illness, distance, or other reasons, are not able to attend meetings. Aid the director of formation and spiritual assistant carrying out their responsibilities. In their absence, but only temporarily, he may take their place or designate another to do so from among those who have made definitive promises. The responsibility of the three councillors is to form with the president, the government, the community, and to support the director of formation generally they are a community members who with definitive promises in particular circumstances members with first promises can be can serve as counselors the director of formation elected by the president by the council from among those who have made definitive promises has the responsibility for preparing the candidates for the first and definitive promises the director works in collaboration with the assistants and with the support of the president. In the absence of the president, the director of formation is his substitute for any function. The secretary of the council has the responsibility of keeping up to date the register of the community, recording the election, admissions, promises, and dismissals. The secretary to the is present to register to the council when it meets and to the community at the time of election, the secretary attends the council meetings and records the minutes of the meeting without the right to vote. The duty of the treasurer is to take charge of the administration of the funds of the community. The treasurer is to present a report of the funds to the council every six months to the community and to the provincial or to the superior of the circumscription once a year. The local statutes are also determined how the community attends to the needs of the poor. Members of the secular order who for reasons of distance, age, and illness cannot participate in the regular meetings of the community remain members of the secular order and under the authority of the provincial delegate are to be associated with particular community. It is the responsibility of the president of the community to establish contact with those members and the responsibility of these members to maintain contact with the community. Where there are an organized circumscription of the friars of the order, the secular order is to form a provincial council to assist one another better information and the apostolate but not for the in intervening of the government of the local communities. The president of the provincial councils ought to be a member of the secular order with definitive promises. The provincial council must submit its statutes to the general de definitory for approval. The provincial statutes are determined the, fo the following. Development of the adequate program formation, Acceptance of the formation of those new members do not live near an established community. In every case, these new candidates must be identified with the form by the established community. 
they are considered members of that community. The procedure for the election and the responsibilities of the three councillors, the remembrances for the deceased members of the community, the circumstances and the conditions of the for taking vows, the minimum and the maximum age to accept the new members, then the maximum number of members of the community before dividing the community to form another. The coordination of the apostolic endeavors within the community or province and the form and use the external signs of membership in the secular order then the practices of the mortification and expression of devotion to our Blessed Mother and our saints. If a secular order community does not belong to any particular province, the community is to establish its own statutes to determine the above matters. This community submits its statutes to the general definitory for approval. Other structures may be introduced at national levels where there is more than one province. And at an in international level, should they be thought useful or necessary for formation, coordination of apostolates and the order, and for the organizing congresses. They do not, however, have any jurisdic jurisdictional authority. These regional councils are to submit their statutes to the general definitory for approval. So lastly, the epilogue. The constitutions of the secular order were drawn up to strengthen the life purpose of its members who form part of the order of the Teresan Carmel. They are called to testify how the Christian faith constitutes the only fully valid response to the problems and hopes that life poses to every person and society. This they fulfill as Carmelite seculars if, beginning with a commitment of, to contemplation, they succeed in giving daily witness in their family and the social life to an integrated approach to life that is fully brought about by inspiration and strength of the and strength of the gospel. The Carmelite seculars, sons and daughters of the of Teresa of Jesus and John of the Cross, they are called to stand before the world as witness of the resurrection and life of the Lord Jesus and the symbol of the living God by means of a life of prayer, of service to evangelization, and by means of the witness of a Christian of a Christian and Carmelite community. All the laity as a community and each one according to his ability must nourish the world with spiritual fruits. That's coming from Galatians 5 verse 22. They must diffuse in the world the, that spirit which emanates the poor, the meek, the peacemakers, whom the Lord in the gospel proclaim as blessed or blessed. That's in Matthew 5 verse 3 to 9. In a word, Christians, particularly the Carmelites, must be to the world what the soul is to the body. So thank you very much. God bless everyone. The Ligon ang Dios. This is Brother Joars Alferes.